I bet here's something you didn't know. Because I've never heard of it anywhere. I think we may come up with this. I don't know. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Hey guys, welcome back to Hobby Hardwood, Alabama. I'm Robert Milton, the sawmill professor. Today we're going to be talking about air drying. We're going to be talking about stickers. A lot of people have been asking about me to cover a few of the basics. Stickers are the little pieces of wood that go between lumber stacks right here. They provide airflow between the layers of lumber. Anyway, sticker placement should be right on top of the runners of the pallets that you built, hopefully, watching my other video. You want them pretty much straight on top of each other. I mean, you ain't gotta just go crazy. Well, this is pretty walnut right here. You need to make stickers accurately. Good stickers make good lumber. If your stickers aren't flat and true into the same thickness all the way across, your lumber's not going to dry accurately. So I highly recommend that you run them through a planer or some other device to make sure your thickness is accurate. Most times, most sawmillers start out, they make stickers that are three quarters of an inch by one inch wide. That's kind of universal size. So if you're just starting out, make some of those, cut them up, lay them out on the concrete. They'll be dry in a couple of days. You'll be ready to use them. You don't have to wait forever for your stickers to dry. They have a lot of surface area. They will dry pretty quick. Some of you folks have noticed that I use uh, profiled stickers or spiral fluted stickers. I do. You can use pretty much any sticker you want to, except you need to figure out a way to get airflow up through the sticker. I'm tired of it over. One of the myths or one of the inaccuracies of stickers is that you have to use the wood that you uh, are drying. That's completely wrong. You do not have to use that. You do not have to do that. So that's myth number one. You don't think a big hardwood manufacturer sort stickers by species and then lumber by species and correlate species of sticker to species of lumber? Of course not. Doesn't really matter what your stickers are made of as long as it's a good non-absorbing wood. For example, you would not want to make stickers out of a sponge. A sponge absorbs water Cause a sticker stain. Same thing with wood. Just as soon not use species that act like a sponge. If you're gonna do it, oaks are good. Let's make sure that the stickers don't have some propensity to sticker stain or crush 
or do something that's going to be damaging to your wood. I typically use mixed hardwood stickers. They seem to work the best. They seem to last the longest. I don't use walnut. I don't use basswood. Um, myth number two is that it takes a year for wood to air dry. That is completely inaccurate. Once you know the ins and outs of air drying, and I will discuss it on some future videos, you can do it in a couple of months if you know what you're doing. I can air dry a pack of poplar in six weeks. I do it all the time. You got to know what you're doing. You can destroy a lot of wood if you do it wrong. It does not take a year to air dry wood or if you know the tricks, which I will show at some point. You always should use kiln dried stickers. Now, basically, you want your stickers to be slightly drier than the moisture content of the wood. You, you never want to use green stickers. They need to be air dried, at least. You don't want kiln dry. Uh, you should be able to reuse them dozens of times. I do. We have multiple bins like this. This bin is for the kiln dried stickers that we just dead stacked. This bin is for the ones that have come back up in moisture to the local EMC value. And um, they're going in my walnut right now. Oh, bow up on me, big boy. Actually, that is a pretty important thing. The smell of air drying lumber off the sawmill attracts bees and you'll get stung. Interestingly enough, the closer you stack to the edge of a board with a sticker, the odds of it cracking and cracking goes way down simply because the stickers act as a barrier. So if this board starts to dry, there's just enough moisture coming from this board through here to keep these boards from cracking. We're not talking about stress cracking. We're talking about, sure enough, um, over drying past the allowable moisture removal rate of the wood and causing end checking. The closer you put your stickers to the end of the board, the better you're going to be. I mean, I've seen people put stickers that were like a foot away from the end. Don't do that. Uh, put them in pretty close. So that's an important thing. I bet here's something you didn't know because I've never heard of it anywhere. I think we may have come up with this. I don't know. But basically, if you have boards that are stressed, and these guys right here, this walnut has some stress in it. You want to alternate the bow. You want one row to go this way, the other row to go that way. And that way all the pressure is on the part that's not flat, and as you start to dry, it's going to settle down like an accordion. What you don't want to do is stack them all in the same direction, layer after layer after layer, because all you're doing then is making Pringles. So I call it sympathetic bow. If you put a flat Pringle in a can of curved Pringles, it's going to, the flat Pringle is going to come out curved. What you want to do is put them so that all your bows are like a spring so wherever it's bowed, it has a tendency to flatten out. Whereas if you have everything basically spooning and you'll never get them straight, as a matter of fact, you will make the straight wood pringle up. Something that we do as a practice, especially in highly stressed wood like walnut. You gotta do it, it doesn't take any extra time. All you gotta do is when you're stacking the wood, just look, look at it, that's what I'm doing. So this whole row's I call it smile up, smile down. This whole row is going to be smile up. So you look down it as you're dragging it back. Put it on the stack. Grab another one. 
look down it as you're dragging it back, see where the bow is, put it on the stack, grab another one. You'll probably get one. Ah, that's good enough. Get some more stickers. So these are smile up. You can actually see, see how they're bouncing a little bit. That means that they're curved up or bowed up. Remember, try to put your stickers as close as you can to the end of the board. Let's get some smile down. You can see how this one's up just a little bit. See how this has got a little bounce to it? This is a highly stressed board. As I put weight on it, it's going to try to flatten it out. However, if I put them all like that, they're all just going to reinforce themselves and they won't flatten it out. Does that make sense? I hope it does. It makes sense to me. So this one's up. Not much. A little bit. Smile up, smile down. Wax on, wax off. Again, this is one of the nice things about using a pre-made palette like I discussed in my other video. It allows you to line the stickers up pretty nice, pretty quick. They don't have to be perfect. I've seen some people that they were perfect. They don't have to be perfect. They have to be right. They don't have to be perfect. So now that was smile up. So smile down. These are going to be smile up. No matter how much you saw try to take the stress out of the wood, some highly stressed species like walnut, I don't know why it's so stressed out. Maybe it's watching too much news, but if it's just a little thing, like the direction you stack your wood, you can clearly see on the edge crack on this one, this is going to be some stress lumber. Smile up. And smile up. How many of you people, you've been watching my videos stack this lumber. Did you ever realize I was actually pre-sorting the lumber as far as bow while I was stacking it? By the way, if you ever come work for me you need to be able to chant that smile up and smile down and we got one nasty board left this one's coming out smile up Okay. Anyway, guys, 
and gals. I hope this was useful to you. Again, this is just scratching the surface of air drying. But I always try to make videos where I'm trying to show you something new, stuff you haven't heard of, or dispel some of the things that are inaccurate. So hopefully, you guys will put a bunch of comments down in the section. Other things you'd like to see me uh, touch on about air drying. Remember, this is the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more out there that you can use and do to manipulate air drying. Uh, I never really even covered the fundamental reasons for the, the adaptations that we do. If you don't mind, please like and subscribe. That's really important for me to get my content out to other viewers. Anyway, we will see you guys next week. Thanks for visiting our sawmill. Click on the links above to see more of our videos.